to Yoga Express, your virtual stretch clinic that helps you move the body to still the mind. My name is Banu Suresh and I'm your host for this program. And we have some wonderful participants. We also have a return, a repeat participant today after a very long time. I will start the introductions in just a moment. This yoga fitness program is Monday through Friday at 1.30 in the afternoon, Eastern Time on Time Warner 57, RCN 84, and Fios 35. We air five days in the week, which means you have five opportunities every week to stretch with us and take care of your health. So make sure you're there. It's always at the same time, 1.30 in the afternoon. We also have an excellent support system, a website. Besides this program, we have a website, Yoga Express com and yoga express dot blogspot dot com besides that we will tell you all the goodies that we will give you after our introductions from my left we have Jamie Avery Jamie is a producer here and Jamie is there anything else you want to add for our viewers other than what we heard yesterday um, well I think yoga is very popular here in this city and um, this is a great workshop and it really makes it makes yoga easy to access. You can watch us there right. at home Absolutely. and participate with us. And we're right into your living room, so I think I this is that. a great project and a great idea. Good. I'm glad you're back, Jamie. And it's wonderful. As a, thank you. And as a health uh, as a health expert, you understand the value of preventive health care too. So it's wonderful to have you here. It's like endorsing that this program is doing something for us. So viewers at home, if you've been with us before stay with us. If you've never been with us, we know you'll be there for a long time. So it's great. Thank, <laughs> Thank you, you, Jamie. Josiane Hurd, to my immediate left. Josiane has been with us in several episodes before. She dropped out of sight for a few weeks, and, and then, then she's been, back. She yeah. missed us so much, right, Josiane? Oh. Anything else you want to add? Oh, <laughs> well, I, I've done a lot of things in my life. Um, sailing, martial art, my boxing, and other items. That's why you and love my dance. link was, of course, yoga. Always yoga. Yes. And Josian, tell me, how often do you get to practice at home? Yoga? Um, do you get to stretch in front of my computer? Even, even in front of your computer? You like to cross your legs? Uh, just sit over there? I twist, I do the yoga. Would you suggest that we should sit for a very long time and cross-legged. You know what you did last time, right? Yes. You're crazy. I, I, well, because the temperature was so cold, and, right. and I overdid it. You always want to make sure you warm up before you do any of the yoga stretches. There are basic warm-ups. Some of the yoga postures are so basic, they are a warm-up in themselves. But sitting in Padmasan is posture number one in your yoga directory, but actually that's one of the hardest ones, for me anyway, especially for those of us who are used to sitting in chairs. On to thank you, Josie, and for coming back. Talisa Michela. Talisa has been with us in several episodes before. Mm -hmm. Talisa, we were talking about something else too just before we started today. So We were talking about um, receiving divine light. I don't know the name of the studio or the school. Good. <laughs> we, for many reasons because I, not, I don't know how to pronounce it. Right. Okay. I'm just lost on that part. But it's a gorgeous experience. Um, you go down there and you can, as a visitor, as a guest there, you come there and they speak to you in um, Japanese and they put the hand over your head over right your, um, give you light and it's a wonderful experience you close your eyes and you just close your eyes for 10 minutes and then they say their prayer right. you open your eyes and you feel those such a refreshment such a relief and it's good because you if you constantly go back and you do so it's, right. it cleans the body it's almost like doing yoga but it's doing yoga and receiving light 
it's a beautiful experience. It yeah. opens your mind and gets all your chakras going, makes you very aware to what's going on around you. It's not a church. It's non-denominational. Right. Any walk of life can come in there and receive divine light, but it's a great, beautiful experience along with doing yoga. So if others know what I'm talking about, they know that you go and you receive light. It's just a beautiful situation to receive. That is so well explained. Especially, Talisa, I latched onto two words. You talked about divine light, mm -hmm. and you mentioned the word chakras. I'm positive that I'm sure they're both interconnected, but I'm positive that's where the yoga link would come in as well. Talking of divinity in yoga, too, we believe there's a divinity in all of us. Yes. We just need to find that. So as we get into the postures are just the first step. There From postures, steps. we move on to the mind. And then you talked about the chakras. Chakras are energizing the body, so we move up from the physical. As the energy rises with more and more practice, the chakras move up, and if we're lucky enough, we're able to feel the divine light as well. So that's beautifully explained. Thank you. Someday you have to tell me where I can enjoy that experience too. I can, I can give you more information after. That'll be wonderful. <laughs> Thank you, and thanks for coming back, Talisa. We have Omar Aquino. Omar. Anything else you want to add from our episode yesterday? No, I, I really enjoyed it. <laughs> you are, we want to hear more about you. You can't just say no. Yes. Okay, Good. <laughs> I have, uh, I really enjoyed my first yoga experience. Okay, tell us about yourself. Um, and I do Kriya Yoga, as I said. Right. Um, and that also deals a lot with the divine light. They say that there is a triple divine sensation which is oh, pulsation wow. okay. uh, vibration and light so it's basically What's the first one again pulsation pulsation vibration and, and light. light so it's basically sound feeling and sight and uh, that that is what we try to see and we also work through the chakras to energize ourselves and go up <laughs> so. nice i can't wait to go up there nice. i'm still at the muladhara chakra the base chakra but one of these days, I'm going to join you up there. <laughs> Welcome back to the program, Omar. We have, I wouldn't say a new face. Denden Girme has been to Omar's right. Denden has been with us in a few episodes before. She dropped out of sight for a while, and then suddenly she missed us. Denden, welcome back. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, well, he doesn't want to talk about himself, but I'm going to tell on him. This is like my little <laughs> brother over here. Oh, and I okay. said, Tim, in my stead um, yesterday. But um, I do a lot of working out on a regular basis, right. and I've noticed that yoga is within all of every, every one of the workouts. Yes. Um, I've gotten into like Wii Sports, and the, there's a fitness, and I do plenty of like I'm doing them, and I'm like, wait, this is the yoga pose. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> this it. is the yoga. This stretch here is a, this cool down is the yoga, but this warm up is a, and it's so fantastic. I love Banu. I love everything that she's doing. I'm Thank so you. glad she's here on public access and every network that she's on. I love it and I'm so glad that you guys get to take advantage of the same thing I get to take advantage of. Fantastic. So you've promised on air to three and a half million people you're not going to drop out of sight anymore. You're going to keep coming back. Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to do my I'll best. I work spot. every day. That's all right. I know. You know, and so I try to get here. We're very grateful that you are here today, Din, and it's wonderful to have you here. Welcome back. I was kidding. Even viewers at home, though, whenever you have a chance, come here. You don't have to give up anything. You're seeing your Cairo? Keep seeing. Maybe your Cairo is a really good-looking guy or a beautiful lady. You don't want to stop seeing them. Stay with them. Stay with your doctor. Stay with whatever fitness practice you already have. Don't give up anything to be here. But just add us to your fitness regime. That's all we're asking. After these introductions, before I forget, I'd like to thank our wonderful director, Jabari Osazi. We have Kenny Ryan, and, Kenny Ryan and Danny Darrow on camera, and Rich Spezial, thank you for this wonderful lighting and the setup right here. Because towards the end of the program, we get a little lost, we get carried away, we are totally hyped up, and I forget to say thank you. So today, Josiane, you are my guide. Tell me, what did you want to focus on today? And if everyone agrees, we'll Can go we ahead. Forward bend? You'd like to do forward folds. Is everyone okay with forward folds? Sure. Yes. Den Den? I'm Anything wearing else? Tight you jeans. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> you are very sporting. Are those jeans that stretch? 
A little bit. You're okay. <laughs> we'll forgive you if you can't get totally into the posture. Jamie, you're okay with this? It sounds Both great. Folks? I love those Indian names. Don't say downward dog. <laughs> no. We'll call it Adho Mukha Shwanasana. And we'll also give it the simple names that I'm accustomed to. So let's go with forward folks. Let's all stand up. You don't want to hear downward dog. You want to hear the Sanskrit name. Folks at home, don't worry if you cannot remember the traditional names. All you want to do, we translate it for you so you can remember the posture. So when we say downward dog, you know it's a forward fold. All right, let's go with some forward folds. We're gonna, let's stagger ourselves. Jamie, do you want to come back? And Omar, come back. And the three of you, Josiane, Talisa, and Denden, come forward. Heels are together, toes slightly apart. I'm gonna get my cheat sheet closer to me. I have a vision situation here. Okay, we're gonna do a posture. It's called Pada Hasta. Pada is foot, Hasta is hands. Literally, it's hands to feet. Thank you for that wonderful music, Jabari. We like it. <coughs> Heels together, toes slightly apart, palms by your side. Bring your chest out. Tilt your pelvis forward just a little bit. Keep your knees close together, straight but not stiff. There should be no tension in your body. Close your eyes for just a few seconds. Notice if your body is swaying to the right or to the left. If you are swaying, you will only feel it when your eyes are closed. When your eyes are open, you have other distractions. So if you are swaying, try to stay calm. Now. Inhale, bring your arms up to shoulder height. Open your eyes now. Bring your arms up to shoulder height, palms facing down. Keep inhaling. Take your arms all the way overhead, palms facing in. Clasp your palms together in any manner that you've been trained. You could have just your index fingers out. You could clasp all your fingers over. You could keep both your palms together. For me, keeping both the palms together is a little bit of a problem. So I'm gonna clasp my fingers together. Make sure you make that connection. We're gonna exhale and fold from the hip. If your fingers do not touch your toes or the floor, do not get discouraged. Just make a connection in some part, maybe at your ankle, your shin, wherever you can get to today. Exhale and fold. Once you're down, either your whole palm goes down the way Josiane has it, Jamie has halfway, Jamie's halfway down with her palms as well. Talisa has her palms all the way down. Omar and I are with our fingertips on the floor. Denden and Josiane are about the same. Half your palms on the floor, so that's wonderful. Keep exhaling. You should feel a delicious stretch in the back of your legs. Does, there, does anyone here not feel the stretch? Okay, good, that's quite as good for now. <laughs> does, anyone, does everyone here feel the stretch? Yes. yes. Wonderful. <laughs> you should feel a wonderful stretch in the back of your legs. That's also a beautiful release for your sciatic nerves. The hamstrings are the thick muscles that protect your sciatic nerves in the back of your thighs. That, those get a wonderful stretch as well. Ooh. Keep exhaling. With every exhale, you should be able to dip forward just a little more. Pada hasta. Hands to feet. Uh, Jamie, this one's for you. Pada is foot and uh, hasta is hands. Now, clasp your palms together with a nice straight back. Bring your arms out in front of you. Keep inhaling. Let's come up all the way. Exhale and release. Now, you could release your arms in two ways. You could do what Talisa just did. You could bring your palms straight down in front of you, or you could release your arms all the way out. Depending on how much space you have at home or at your studios, you want to be mindful of people next to you. And that's why we have staggered out. So if you are with a group and you're practicing together, you want to make sure you don't hit each other, that's what you would do. All right, let's all turn to the left. Is that good? Okay, maybe, you know what? Let's turn to the right. I think Kenny's camera has not picked us up for a while. Let's turn to the right. Bring your feet out a little wider, a little further apart than you normally would. We're going to do an intense forward fold and you want to, just so you don't hit each other, let's stagger ourselves. That's good. Omar, you're fairly tall. Bring your left foot out a little more. That's it. Very nice. Now, <laughs> notice Omar has got regular trousers, Denden has jeans, but they're still sporting enough to give it a try. Now, if you hear a rip or a tear, don't <laughs> worry about it. They are the ones who need to be worried. <laughs> no, you'll, we'll be fine. Now, put your brakes on. So when we say put your brakes on, bring your toes in. 
And remember, you want your feet, my feet are about three and a half to four feet apart. Once your brace, once your feet are nice and steady, both the insides of both your feet are parallel, inhale. Bring your arms up to shoulder height, palms facing down. Keep inhaling, take your arms all the way overhead, palms facing in. Now what we're gonna do, bring your shoulder, bring your triceps, your shoulders back behind your ears, bring your biceps and your triceps behind your ears. You should also, right here, you should also feel a beautiful stretch in your triceps and a nice extension of the biceps. We're gonna exhale and fold from the hip with a nice straight back. Exhale and fold. Place your palms between your feet. You wanna make sure your elbows are nice and close. Once your palms are on the floor, you may wanna wiggle your feet further apart only if you feel nice and safe. By bringing your feet apart a little more, it helps you bring the crown of your head a little closer to the floor. Keep exhaling and dip, keep going. Do not feel discouraged if the crown of your head does not touch the floor today. It's okay, keep exhaling. Just make sure that you are steady, whatever you do. You should feel a beautiful stretch this time. Again, not only on your hamstrings and your sciatic nerves, you'll also feel it on the abductor muscles on the inside of your thighs. Keep exhaling and hold. Now, just come up a little bit. Let's come up up to midpoint and then wiggle your feet a little closer together. When you feel it's safe to bring your palms off of the floor, clasp your palms together, extend your arms out and come up. Inhale, come up with a nice straight back. Exhale and release. Tell me you guys didn't feel that. Let's wiggle our feet together, closer together and get a little bit of feedback. Denden, how did you go with your jeans? Were you okay? They didn't split. They didn't split, <laughs> right. And you felt the stretch too. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> and Omar, I noticed, although you don't, your yeah. jeans are not tight, but I noticed that it might have restricted you, but you did great. So you felt it? Yeah, I wasn't sure how wide my feet needed to be. Right. <laughs> the thing is, as wide, uh, just notice that as wide as you get your feet are, the further apart your feet, legs are, your feet, the closer you are to the floor because that brings you physically closer to the floor. So the idea is just to come forward and feel the stretch. If you felt the stretch, did you feel it in the back of your legs? I did. Purpose served. <laughs> That's what we want. We want to feel that. Okay, let's turn to the front. Bring your feet together. Heels are together. Toes slightly apart. We're going to stagger ourselves again a little bit. Now, Jamie, you might want to come back a little bit. <clears throat> Palms are by your side first. Inhale, bring your palms up to shoulder height. Our hands are up to shoulder height, palms facing down. Keep inhaling, turn your arms, turn your palms in. Take your arms all the way overhead. And this time we're gonna cross over and hold on to the opposite elbows. Let's clasp the opposite elbows. Uttana, Uttana is also called ragdoll in North America. We, Uttana literally translates to standing forward fold. Uttana is just folding over. Exhale, and with a nice straight back, fold. This is one of the few postures in the sequence where we do not insist that you make the connection. You do not have to touch any part of the body to keep that connection because you already are holding on to the opposite elbows. You have your connection right there. Keep exhaling. You should feel a wonderful compression of the lower abdomen on your upper thighs. As well, you do feel, you should feel that wonderful stretch in the back of your legs all the way down to your ankles. Hold, keep exhaling. Every time you exhale, you should be able to go down even one millimeter at a time should be enough. Let's inhale. Keep your back nice and straight. Let's come up. Exhale and release. Where are we next? Actually, we could have just gone straight into the next one. That's okay, my mistake. We will do this. We'll go into the next one, Parvatasan. This is the one you were talking about. This is Adho Mukha Shwanasan, right, the downward dog. Yeah. Okay, Jamie, we're not gonna call it downward dog. It has another name. This we beautiful call it. Indian names. Okay, Adho Mukha Shwanasan. Okay. Adho is downward, 
Mukha is face, Shwana is dog. So literally downward facing dog. And that's how they got the translation. I know it doesn't sound as beautiful in English, but literally that's what it means. But the school that I came from had a very simple name for this. They just called it Parvatas. And Parvat is mountain. So when you look in profile, we look like a mountain. So it doesn't matter how you try to remember it. If it helps you to remember Adho Mukashanasan or mountain. How do you say that again? Adho. Adho. Adho is downward. Mukha is face. Mukha. Mukha. Shwana is dog. Shwana. Shwana. <laughs> Not bad. Okay, bad. you're on your way. <laughs> All right, let's take our arms back overhead now. Clasp your palms together this time. We're going to exhale, and as we fold over, place your palms about 12 inches in front of your feet. Exhale and fold. Now, in order to do that, some of us may need to bend our knees. It's okay because we're going to take our legs back. So place your palms flat, take the left leg back, and then take the right leg back. Today we're not going to be using props because we have a few plans after this episode is over. If your heels do not touch the floor today, it's okay. What folks at home could do is place a foam block under your heels to make the connection. Or you could wrap a little towel, anything that will help you make some kind of contact. You want that energy to stay within your body. You don't want to lose it. So if you keep your heels up, you're building tension in your body and you're losing all your energy outside. Now, when you keep your heels, when you place your heels on the floor, if you're able to, if not, place something under, roll up your mat. When you place it, you'll really feel an intense stretch in the back of your legs, especially in the calves. Hold, keep exhaling. Now coming out of this posture will be a little tricky, but it's not impossible. Very gently walk your feet closer to your hands, and you may have to come up on fingertips once you get close. Clasp your palms together. Inhale, let's come up. Exhale and release. Again, Josiane and Talisa got their palms down the front. Remember, we're trying to trying not to hit each other, so that's very mindful. You want to do whichever way is okay for you at home, but this is what is helpful for our people outside uh, next to you as well. Let's sit down. Let's come and sit on our heels. We're going to do a posture called, we're going to get into a posture called rabbit, shashank. Shashank is a Sanskrit word that literally translates as rabbit. And it's a full forward fold. When we fold over completely in profile, we would look, hopefully, we'll all look like rabbits. Now, some of us may look more of a rabbit than others, but it's okay. The idea is to feel a forward fold. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to sit, sit on your heels so your feet are flat and you're sitting very comfortably on your heels. Now, if this posture is a little intense, thank you, Danny, we have five minutes. If this posture, is, this stretch is a little too intense for you, you may want to bring your knees out just a little bit. Now, the closer your knees are, the greater is the intensity of this posture because that simply means that you're folding over with no gap, so there's no, um, no reason to relax yourself. You, you want to relax in mind, but your body has to keep moving. So inhale. Sorry, Talisa, I might hit you this way. So. <laughs> inhale, your arms up to shoulder height, palms facing down. Keep inhaling. Take your arms all the way overhead, palms facing in. Clasp your palms together. You can cross your fingers over, keep your index fingers out, or you can simply keep both your palms flat. I'm going to cross my fingers over. Take your biceps behind. Carmen, Sorry. you just created an eclipse over there. But that's OK. We forgive you. Exhale and fold from the hip. Place your palms on the floor. The trick in this posture is to try and touch your forehead to the floor before your palms go down. Sometimes that is a little hard. It's easier said than done, but the idea is to make the effort. Once your palms are on the floor, you want to keep wiggling your palms further and further till you feel a nice, a beautiful tension in your arms. It's a happy tension, so it's okay. Clasp your palms together. Let's come up. Inhale. Exhale and release. 
Now we're going to fold over in Janu Sesha. The posture that we just came out of is Shashanka Rabbit. We're going to go into Janu Sesha. Let's sit down and extend the left leg out first. Fold the right leg at the knee and make sure you bring your right knee down to the floor. Now sometimes it may be a little hard because we're all accustomed to sitting in chairs. It may be a little hard to bring your knee all the way down because it does mean that you will feel the tension in the outside, your abductor muscles on the outside of your right thigh. But we're gonna make the effort. If it's hard, sit on a block, sit on something that helps you elevate the hips. Extend the left leg out, left foot is flexed. Notice what Josiane's doing. She has got her own little adaptation. She has hurt her knee and she's being careful. And that's what you wanna do. If you've hurt yourself, make sure you make whatever adaptation your body needs. Be careful, respect your body. Turn to face your extended leg. Inhale. Inhale your arms up to shoulder height, palms facing down. Keep inhaling. Take your arms all the way overhead, palms facing in. Clasp your palms together. We're going to exhale and fold from the hip. Exhale and fold. Clasp the soles of your feet or your toes, wherever your hands would reach today. If your hands are not quite there, it's okay. Place your hands at your ankles, wherever you're ready to go, but literally Janu Sirsha, just so you know what you're aiming for. Sirsha is head, Janu is knee. Literally, it translates to head to knee. If you want to experience that sensation, bend your knee just a little bit, but that doesn't serve the purpose of feeling that extension in the back of your leg, so you want to keep your legs stretched. It doesn't matter if your forehead touches the knee today. It will happen. Inhale, come up with a nice straight back. Keep that leg extended. Extend the right leg out in front of you. We're going to go into Paschimottam, bird beak. Exhale and fold from the hip. Now this time you can hold on to your two big toes with both hands or you can place your palms right over your flexed feet. Whatever you do, you should feel the stretch in the back of your legs and in the back of your spine. The whole spinal extension gets a wonderful release. Inhale, let's come up. Exhale and release. One last side, thing. Other side. Ah, yes. okay, thank you. <laughs> Fold the left leg at the knee. Thank you, Josiane. Your right leg extended, turn to face the extended leg, inhale, your arms are already up, exhale, fold from the hip. I need you to keep me in check, Josian. Inhale, let's come up. Since we have about 20 seconds, exhale, release. Let's finish with a wonderful forward fold, a full fold, it's called Mahamudra. Let's sit on our heels. Take your arms behind your back, clasp the opposite elbows, and we're going to exhale and fold from the hip, touching your forehead to the floor. Maha Mudra is literally grand gesture. Maha is grand, Mudra is gesture. Try to keep your buttocks on the floor. Inhale, let's come up. And release. Thank you for stretching with us. My name is Banu Suresh and this is Yoga Express on behalf of Jamie, Josiane, Talisa, Omar and David.